Okay, guys, today we're going to start a new book. It's called The Orange Outlaw, and this is going to go with your mystery novels for the week. Um, this book will take us about 10 days, but this is a wonderful book, and I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Um, we're going to start with chapter one. We are only going to be doing one chapter a day until the very end, and then we will be doing two chapters. But for today, we're just going to focus on chapter one. In chapter one, I want you to think about who the main characters are, where does the story take place, what is the problem in this chapter, and then how do they plan to solve the problem. Um, when you are fi finished, you are going to have two pages that um, you are going to complete. These chapters are very, very short, so you should have plenty of time to get this done at school. Um, but here's our first page that you will complete. Um, it'll ask you what the point of view is. We are going to, so I want you guys to be listening for words such as I or he or she. If you see I or hear I a lot, like the person is talking the entire time, it's going to be a first person. If it is given from a narrator and someone is talking about all of the characters, that will be third person. So I want you to be listening for that and we'll talk about it as we read. The next part is our figurative language. I know that you have talked about this in class. So it says what type of figure language is used in the following, chap in following chapter one. So we have a sentence down here and I want to know if that's a hyperbole, if it's alliteration, a simile, or an ontomatopoeia. So we will go over that one as well. And then this one, I want you guys to listen for this portion of the story. It says, what is the purpose of the block party Uncle Warren and the children are attending tonight? So I want you to listen. Why are they having a block party? On this page, you're going to be listing the characters. You're going to be telling me the setting, and there can be more than one. Down here, we're going to be talking about context clues for the word valuable. So as I'm reading, listen for that word valuable, and they want to know what does that word mean. Okay, so we are going to start on chapter one. Here's our focus questions again. All right, here we go. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose stood at Uncle Warren's balcony, nine floors below the cars, buses, and taxis of New York City's Zoom by. As dusk turned to night, the city lights began to blink on. People were strolling to restaurants and theaters. Dink's uncle st stepped onto the balcony. That's a pretty sight, isn't it? He said. It's great, Dink said. I feel like an eagle up here. Thanks for inviting us for the weekend, Josh told him. You are entirely welcome, my boy, Uncle Warren said. And thanks for inviting us to your block party, Ruth Rose said. I've never been one before. Josh let out a chuckle. My little brother have block parties all the time, he said. They bring their blocks out to the sand and throw them to at each other. Do you guys think that that's truly what a block party is, is when some kids bring out some building blocks and throw them at each other? I don't think that's the type of block party they're talking about. Uncle Warren laughed. In New York City, we often have parties where everyone on the block is invited. He explained, tonight we plan to raise money for the Central Park Zoo. So they're having a block party to raise money for the Central Park Zoo. Remember, they're in New York City. Why does this zoo need money? Asked Ruth Rose. Some of the animals need more space, Uncle Warren said. Can they make all the money from one party? Josh, Josh asked, gazing down the street. Tonight is just the beginning, Uncle Warren said. The zoo will be raising money for at least a year. He looked at his watch. We'd better get going, but first, I want to show you something. The kids followed Dink's uncle through the living room to a small study at the back of the apartment. The room held a desk and chair and tall shelves crammed with books. On the desk lay a painting of a rowboat floating on a pond. Do you like it? Uncle Warren asked. It's pretty, Ruth Rose said. I like the flowers on the water. Those are lily pads, Uncle Warren. <coughs> said this painting this was painted a long time ago by a name man, named Claude Monet it's very valuable is that painting yours Dink asked I wish it were Donnie 
his uncle said. My friend Forrest Evans just brought it vacationing and bought it vacationing in France. He shipped it to me for safekeeping. He'll collect his beauty when he returns to New York for a couple of days. Uncle Warren looked at his watch. It's time to go downstairs, he said. Help me shut off a few lights. The kids walked around switching off lights. Leave the one over the kitchen table on, Dink's uncle called. In the kitchen, a hanging light shone down on a wooden bowl filled with oranges. Dink was tempted to take one, but decided to wait till later. They left the apartment and Uncle Warren locked the door. Then they crossed the hall and crowded into the small elevator. Dink pushed the button that said lobby. What happens to all the cars when you have a block party, Josh, Josh asked as they rode down. The police seal off the street, Uncle Warren explained. You'll see. A minute later, they left the elevator, crossed the lobby, and walked to the front door. Hello, kids, said Roger, the doorman. He looked like royalty in his crisp uniform and pointy mustache. The block party sure has drawn a lot of people. Are you going? Ruth Rose asked him. He shook his head. Afraid not, Missy. I have to stay at the door, but I'll be able to see a lot from here. Have fun. I hear there's a lot of good stuff to eat. Awesome, Josh said, rubbing his belly. Still hungry, Josh? Uncle Warren asked. Didn't I feed you enough? Josh grinned. That was two hours ago. Josh is a baby wolf, Ruth Rose said. He needs to eat 10 times a day. The kids and Uncle Warren walked outside. <clears throat> it was warm and the street was crowded. Music voices and food smell filled the air. This is so cool, Uncle Warren, Dink said. We're standing right where cars and buses usually drive. Yes, Uncle Warren said, and tomorrow morning they'll all be back. Evening, Mr. Duncan, a woman said behind them. She was stooped in her and had a lined face with wild orange hair. Hello, Miss, Bon Miss Booker, Uncle Warren said. You haven't met my nephew, Donnie, and his friends, have you? Kids, Miss Booker is the building manager. The kids each said hello and shook Miss Booker's hand. She was wearing a raincoat, even though the sky was clear. A pleasure, the woman said. Enjoy the party? She turned around and entered the building. Through the glass door, Dink saw her talk to Roger. After a minute, she walked towards the elevator. What does a building manager do, Josh, Josh asked. Many things, Uncle Warren said. She fixes leaky faucets, calls electricians, and makes sure the building is kept clean. She even delivers packages to my door so Roger doesn't have to leave his station. Does he? Does she live here like you? Ruth asked. Uncle Warren nodded. Miss Booker has a small apartment in the basement, he said. Suddenly, Josh stopped dead in his tracks. You guys aren't going to believe this, he said, but I just saw a flying watermelon. All right, that is the end of chapter one. So remember, we're going to go back to these pages right here. Um, the very first one, I want you to pull your pages out. The very first one, it says point of view. From which point of view is the story written? Is this written in first person that one person is talking the entire time? Or is this in third person that there's a narrator talking over everyone? And then the next part says, which words helped you to determine the point of view? <clears throat> if it was in first person, you would have words like I and the person is telling the story. If it's in third person, you're going to hear words like he, she, and then have names given. That's talking about the characters. Okay, down here, figurative language. Write the type of figurative language used in the following chapter one excerpt. Josh is like a baby wolf. He needs to eat 10 times a day. So you hear right here, Josh is like a baby wolf. It gives you that example right there that tells you there's a keyword in there that tells you what it is. Is this a hyperbole? 
an alliteration, a simile, or an onomatopoeia. If you don't know what those are, you need to look them up on Google and try to figure out what they are first because I know you have gone over those in class. Okay, right here, reread to clarify. What is the purpose of the block party Uncle Warren and the children are attending tonight? Why are they having that block party? Um, that was given to you on the very first page. Um, and I would like for you to make sure that you are writing this in a complete sentence. So you need to restate that question on that one right there. Here's your characters. I want you to list your characters. I want you to list your settings. Um, vocabulary context clues. Define the vocab word using context clues or dictionary. So if you can't figure it out from the sentence, go ahead and pull out your dictionary.com and try to figure it out. This was uh, painted a long time ago by a man named Claude Monet. It's a, it is very valuable. So that word valuable, what does that mean? Right here, you're gonna write your definition and then I want you to find a synonym for valuable. Synonym, remember, means the same. All right, well, that is the end of our video. Um, make sure you get those pages completed. And then I would like for you to um, have them ready for me tomorrow so that I can check them. Thank you.